Hey, what's going on, games? In this video, I'll be talking about some great tips I've picked up along the way while playing the critically acclaimed MMORPG Final Fantasy XIV. Hopefully, the tips within this video will help you tremendously throughout your journey in Eorzea. We'll be starting off with a few quality of life tips and we'll be moving into tips that would help you when it comes to the combat system in the game. And we'll be ending the video with a few short bits of little tips that would help you along the way. First off, let's talk about the two different type of camera settings. The standard and legacy type of settings. With standard camera setting, it's mostly based on where your character is facing. But the downside to that is when you're moving backwards, your character will not turn around to move, but instead would slowly walk backwards. When it comes to standard movement, I personally feel that there's a lot of camera movement involved. Some players might find this annoying when compared to legacy movement because with legacy movement, you can keep your camera fixed while you go on another direction. Pay attention that you still have to move it, but not as much as standard. It's down to preference at the end of the day, but I do suggest you to try out legacy camera setting. For my second tip, I'll be talking about the interface and the effects settings. First off, let's get the effects out of the way because some people can find the effects in 14 to be really obnoxious and flashy. While you can't reduce or change the settings on the effects of the bosses and raids and dungeon, you can hide other players' effects with the following settings. I would suggest you to have your party battle effects set to limited. This is to ensure that you're able to see the lovely bubbles from your beloved healers that either reduces damage taken or gives out a regen tick. With that setting, it should make raids and dungeons more bearable and easier to digest since it hides other players' effects from your screen. And then for others, be sure to leave it to show none, as I don't think you want to see other players that aren't in your party spamming their skill effects when they're around you. When it comes to your HUD layout, it's all down to preference, but I would suggest you to have things that you'll have to be paying attention to close to the center of your screen to reduce eye movement and to have that information readily available. I would also suggest to place your enmity list somewhere you can look at easily. This way, you're always able to see the cast bar of enemies that you don't have targeted. Also, here are some quick tips for your interface. You can make your important skills icon bigger by placing them into separate hotbar and increasing the size in the HUD layout settings. You can also hide your empty skill slot on your hotbar and hiding the numbers with these simple settings. Also, you don't like the inventory view space? You can expand it too and have everything up close and personal. For our third tip, if you haven't unlocked your retainers already, I would suggest you to do so right now. The retainers in Final Fantasy XIV are basically the version of bank slash merchant to store and sell your stuff to other players. With your retainers, you can also send them for a venture, in short, sending them out on a small little expedition quest, and they'll return with either rare and good loot or trash. You can unlock it easily and by speaking to the Trouble Adventurer, which can be found in all of the three main cities and completing the side quests that it gives you. Be mindful that there's a difference between a Battle and Gatherer Venture Retainer. With the Battle Retainer, they can obtain materials that are only dropped by mobs, while the Gatherer on the other hand will gather materials for you. To send them out on a venture, you need to have this little venture token, which can easily be obtained through purchasing it from your grand company vendor. There's also a leveling system tied to the venture system. Let's say for example, if you're a level 50 paladin and you set your retainer to be a paladin, your retainer can only go up to level 50. In short, it scales up to the level of the job that you have and you also set it on your retainer. My fourth tip is going to be a very general and quick guide for every roles when it comes to dungeons. 
When it comes to tanking and if you and your healer is comfortable with bigger pools, then be sure to take that route as it makes the dungeon go a lot quicker. In addition to that, be sure to use and cycle through your defensive cooldowns as your healer will love and appreciate you for doing so. If you're a healer on the other hand, learning how to balance between DPS and healing the tank is crucial. It's going to be tough at first, but once you get used to it, your DPS as a healer can be useful when it comes to shortening the time you spend in dungeon. When it comes to DPS, there's nothing special. Be sure to use your AoE abilities when there's more than 3 mobs, and also if you're a range or caster, be sure to use your limit break to burn those motherfucking mobs down. In addition to that, tank and healers, your AoE abilities does matter. So, if you're in a dungeon, tanks and healers, if you're comfortable, please, for the love of God, use your AoE abilities. Now that we're done with our bigger tips, let's move on to our quick burst tips. Learning how to weave in Final Fantasy XIV would help you a lot. This is because as you get closer to endgame, your rotation heavily revolves around weaving in skills while you're doing your GCD. If you have no idea what's weaving, it's basically the act of using skills that aren't part of your main cooldown, which we refer to as Global Cooldown aka GCD. Skills that aren't part of your main cooldown are what we call Off Global Cooldown aka OGCD. So in essence, while you're using your GCD, while it's in cooldown, be sure to learn how to weave in your OGCD. Now while you're doing all of this, just ensure that you keep on rolling your global cooldown. You never, ever want to stop. Just roll those GCD, my friend! I cannot stress this enough, but as soon as you unlock your chocobo, Please be sure to finish the quest, My Feisty Little Chocobo, as it unlocks the Chocobo Saddleback, which gives you extra inventory slots on the go. Eating any food before killing any mobs in the dungeons would give you a 3% XP gain, so be sure to do that whenever you queue into the dungeon. Some melee DPS combos gives you more potency or job gauge when you do your positions. So be sure to read your tooltips and check which skills is a positional. Other than that, I hope you're able to learn something through watching this video. I wish you the best of luck and be sure to enjoy your journey while going through Final Fantasy XIV. Also, to all of my dear friends, if you haven't subscribed to the channel yet, be sure to do so and hit that bloody bell icon, alright? Check me out on twitch.tv slash kingjaffo. Thank you so much.